Hey everybody, my name is Paul Leston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. Welcome live to uh, my stream here on YouTube, on Twitter, and uh, we'll have this later on the Heavy on Jets Facebook page. Everybody, what a... Again, my name is Paul Leston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. You can follow me on all social media, at Boy Green 25 below. Uh, I'm not even in the studio right now. I'm in a different location in the house, but we just had to get on immediately uh, after this game because Tom Brady dupes us one more time. 44-year-old Tom Brady comes to MetLife Stadium and uh, finds a way to get the Jets one more time. The Jets, phenomenal. Zach Wilson looks great. Drives the Jets down the field, puts a bunch of points on the board. I mean, all kinds of things happened in this contest, quite frankly, that haven't happened like ever. R Tom Brady throwing a pick at the end of the half. Brandon Eccles bringing that back. The Jets end up getting three points there. The Jets had a chance to win this game. And maybe I can have touchy good feelings about it in the future. But right now, it hurts, man. The Jets were this close. Now, I will say this. Again, wherever you're watching, feel free to jump in the comments. Uh, wherever you're watching, again, right now we're only on YouTube and Twitter. We're not on the Heavy on Jets page today. But wherever you're watching, drop your comments, questions, and reactions uh, to this contest, and I'll bring them up on the show here in a second. But I will say this. Go to the end of the game. Fourth and two, the Jets are driving. Things look like the Jets are about to finish this puppy off. Uh, they're up four, kick a field goal. They're up seven. They score a touchdown. It's over. The Jets face a fourth and two play, and the Jets decide to go for it. And I will say pause time right there. I love the chutzpah. Robert Sala says, screw Tom Brady. We're not going to give him a chance to beat us. We're going to take the game with the ball in our hands right here, right now, and we're going to go win this game. On the surface, before we get to the play, I'm like, phenomenal. That's great. Awesome. The Jets should do whatever they have to do to win this game. And then I see Zach Wilson on fourth and two go slap the cheeks of Dan Feeney and go, huh? And then he dives for it. I'm like, what the hell? And of course the Jets don't convert. What kind of team converts on a fourth and two QB sneak? What are we doing, man? Mike LaFleur had called such a phenomenal game, kept the Tampa Bay defense on their heels, doing all kinds of jet sweeps run the football down their throat and great Zach Wilton passing throughout this contest. But I got to tell you, what the hell, man? QB sneak on fourth and two. What kind of lack of communication? What kind of crappy, idiotic thoughts were going through some brains here when this was happening? I mean, what the hell? And of course, as I've seen, unfortunately, for the majority of my life and the majority of the last 20 years, Tom Brady... Walks right down the field, scores a touchdown and a two-point conversion, and the Jets lose. The Jets should have won, man. They had it. Why did we go on fourth and two with a quarterback sneak? I need a drink. I need a little sip real quick. Good Lord. For God's sakes, what happened there? And, of course, the Jets lose. But they were this close. They should have, could have, would have. Could have been the upset of the 2021 regular season. But they blew it. They just found a way to screw it up. And Tom Brady, that 44-year-old bastard, gets one last laugh on old boy Green here. Ha, ha, ha. You thought you won. Psych. What a great game from the Jets. How game they were. And they couldn't get the job done. They could get the job done. A lot to take away from this game. Let's get into some of the comments. I, I mean, just again, I, I got to say, just horrible. I mean, it was just horrible. Horrible. They could have won the game. Could have won the game. And again, I want to say this, that I get it Monday morning quarterback. Again, we're just minutes after the game here. But Monday morning quarterback, right? It's easy for all of us to say, what a dumb decision. What a dumb this or dumb this, dumb this. I will tell you live when they chose to go for it. I'm like, okay, screw Tom Brady. You score a touchdown. MetLife is going to lose their collective minds. Okay. I loved the decision to go for. It. I hated the call. QB sneak. What the hell, man? Terrible fourth quarter management. And Tom Brady uh, makes you pay for it. So terrible. All right. Let's go to Mr. Maja here. Uh, Salah should be fired. Uh, that's too far, but I, I mean, just horrible. Terrible. I just don't get it. And, uh, again, the horrible fourth quarter management. I, I, uh, yeah, it's just, I just don't get it, man. It's frustrating. 
This could have been a huge win for the locker room, for the team. This could have been great. And you could have spoiled Tom Brady, which, again, this was probably, although we can't say this because Tom Brady's going to live forever, I guess, but this could have been the perfect Tom Brady moment to spoil him. Because it looked in reverse at the end of the first half. Again, Tom Brady throws a pick. We turn that into three points. That's normally what happens to the Jets. They normally make a mistake, and Tom Brady makes them pay for it. So all of a sudden, it looked like the world was flipping here. It looked like, oh boy, wait a second. The Jets have flipped the script. But no. No, they didn't. But uh, So that was incredibly frustrating. Uh, I've just seen too many of these from Tom Brady. I've had enough. But let's go to another one here from Malcolm Harper. Boy, you have to admit, Zach Wilson's grown up before our very eyes. Third straight game without a pick. That's the main reason why we stayed in the game so the, uh, to the very end. By the way, Malcolm, actually the fourth game without a pick. I can lay some numbers on you. Great from Zach Wilson. He had that one pass that was nearly intercepted uh, at the end of the first half. That was on him. I mean, Jeff Smith could have come back to the football, uh, but that was certainly on Zach Wilson. But I will say it's his fourth straight game without a pick. He has two picks in his last seven games, and he's gone. I, I'm going to have to do the math, and I'll tweet it out after the show. But heading into this game, he was 103 straight passes without an interception. That was the fourth longest active streak in the league, and obviously he didn't throw a pick on this one. So add whatever the attempts were on this. I'll tweet it out after the, after the stream. But no question, Zach Wilson looked more comfortable in this game, getting to a positive note for a second here, but we could get back to the negative. It said Zach Wilson looked mature. He looked calm, cool, collected, decisive. It's the word that jumps to my mind watching this game, Malcolm. Is Zach Wilson looked like he belonged. He was out dueling Tom Brady. Tom Brady out there. He was throwing dimes, lasers. I mean, I tweeted out, wow, what a dime from Zach Wilson. And you wouldn't have known what pass it was because there was like four or five dimes in a row. The beautiful soft touch pass where there's pressure immediately, immediately in his face and he backs up boop, 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 and just tosses a beautiful rainbow soft pass bloop, right into the running back's hand. Ty Johnson make plays. I'm like, whoa, what a throw. And then he tight ropes it to Keelan Cole. I'm like, whoa, mama. Tight ropes it to Kenny Yaboa. Pow, pow, pow. Or in John Madden. Boom, boom, boom. There was those throws from Zach Wilson that made you go, ooh, ah, yes. He just had money throws. The Braxton Berrios touchdown throw where he just fired it in there. The, the Braxton Berrios third down play where he got the ball to him and the clock kept rolling. So many wow throws in this game. Yes, Zach Wilson has improved, progressed. It's been terrific. It's been terrific. I am a, I will tell you. I know there are some people out there that aren't Zach Wilson people or are Zach Wilson people. I'll tell you this. I was a Zach Wilson guy. I'm still a Zach Wilson guy. And he has improved dramatically. And I don't care what anyone says. Because here's the thing on the Zach Wilson thing real quick. And then we'll get into others. That it's a moving field goal post for Zach Wilson, right? At the beginning of the year, oh, too many turnovers, Zach. Rain it in, man. That's what people were saying, right? So then he reigns it in. And people are like, ah, oh, Zach, where's the deep ball, man? Come on, show a little chutzpah. Yeah, sure, you're not throwing picks because you're not throwing it deep. And I'm like, people, make up your goddamn mind on one side. Oh, too many turnovers. Not enough turnovers. Like, people, just make up your mind. Pick something, and that's the field goal post. This moving field goal post is unfair criticism of Zach Wilson. But I digress. All right, let's jump into some other comments. Again, wherever you're watching, uh, feel free. Uh, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Also, give me a thumbs up. That uh, makes a tremendous different difference with all our content. We have New York Jets post-game live streams after every game. And then as we get into the offseason, we'll have Mock Draft Mondays. So check those out. Those will be coming out every Monday after the season with great draft guests and others. Again, my name is Boy Green. You can follow me on social media at Boy Green 25 at everything. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And also, wherever you're watching, make sure you drop a question or comment on the game, and uh, I'll bring you up here on the show. Uh, let's go to Justin Jets here. I wonder if Zach checked into the quarterback sneak. Depending on the line, the quarterback always has the option to audible the sneak. We saw that, again, the game's kind of a blur because it just happened, but there was one where Zach Wilson had a huge try. I think it was to Keelan Cole, and he ran up, and he's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they ran like this hurry-up offense, and then they immediately went with QB sneak. That wasn't on the fourth down play, but I would imagine not. And the reason why I don't believe that is, we'll see from Sal after the game. Again, I'm live here, so I did not see Sal's comments or what's happening right now. But it was a fourth down. They call a timeout, and they had time to think about it. That's why I don't think it was an audible. But maybe. Maybe it was, Justin. Either way, if it was him, 
Mike LaFleur, whoever, they, they're terrible, terrible, absolutely god-awful. Good to go for it. Yes. That call, terrible, just terrible. Um, Braxton Berrios was absent on fire. How do you not go to Braxton on fourth and two? Or whatever. I mean, anything. I I, I mean, I, I, Braxton, I, I would have thrown it to Denzel Mims, and he can't get diddly crap right now. I would have thrown it to somebody. Uh, QB sneak on fourth and two. What the hell? I can't say that now. Kenny Yaboa, my grandma, Salah, I don't care. Throw it to somebody. You could get a PI, could get a defensive hold, uh, something. I, I don't know. But not QB sneak. That's for damn sure. And uh, Bryant with a, uh, you know, with a very simple reaction, but one that is quite effective. Damn. Like Farouk in wrestling. Damn. Because it was, as he said in this follow-up YouTube comment, it was a good game. I'll go a step further. It was a great game. They were out dueling each other. That was phenomenal to see. I, I didn't have that on the bingo card. Zach Wilson, Tom Brady, you know, kind of going back and forth. I thought it was terrific theater. Terrific theater. Hunter Smith, Zach Wilson, rookie of the week number four. He damn well should be, quite frankly. And uh, it's a damn shame, by the way. Uh, someone else who would have been in that conversation, Michael Carter, 57-yard run. By the way, that 57-yard run uh, in the first quarter was the longest run by a member of the Jets since 2018. And unfortunately, he gets a concussion, injury issues there. That's a, that's incredibly disappointing, I will say. Um, that's a bummer. No question about it. But in terms of Zach Wilson, hell yeah. And if he gets this fourth Rookie of the Week award, which will be coming up, Jet fans, you can vote on that on Twitter, uh, that will tie Jamar Chase with the most Rookie of the Week awards this season uh, with Jamar Chase, who, by the way, had a hell of his own game, as I saw, uh, as my fantasy football team was being destroyed in the championship game. So maybe he uh, will get those votes. We'll see. Make sure you guys vote. Uh, but no other rookie quarterback has won it once this year, let alone three times. Zach Wilson uh, coming away with uh, his third victory from that standpoint. Let's go back to YouTube here. Uh, Zach is looking better every week. The offensive line is looking more dominant each week. Now during the offseason, Jets need to improve receivers and D-line. A couple of things here. First off, you got to give a tremendous amount of credit to Benton and this Jets coaching staff for that offensive line last week. I mean, we had Greg Van Roten. I mean, we had Dan Feeney. I mean, we had a bunch of Garbaggio. And they gave up one sack in that game against the Jaguars. I get it. It's the Jaguars. But that offensive line was trash. Absolutely terrible. Terrible. And yet the Jets found a way. And then this week, they were pushing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their strength of their defense is the defensive line. And the Jets, who got two guys back that are key, Elijah Vera Tucker and Laurent Duvernay Tardif. Uh, they did not have Connor McGovern, Dan Feeney was in, et cetera. They were moving guys, man. They were pushing guys. They were bullying out there. So the offensive line looked fantastic in the run game. And, uh, wow, just what a performance. So a huge shout-out to this offensive line who was much maligned heading into the year. A lot of people went, oh, boy, what's up with this offensive line? Well, it's looked pretty damn impressive. Pretty damn impressive. And Zach Wilson has looked better every week. In terms of the offseason, uh, we're going to do a full offseason plan, so make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube and give us a thumbs up. We'll be doing offseason plans and uh, what I think they should do. But a couple of things there. Uh, Dean Vaughn, I want more edge rush. Uh, going to need an off-ball linebacker. Um, you know, the corners, so this is an interesting question for a future video, but uh, the corners, Brandon Eccles, nice pick on Tom Brady, Bryce Hall, and a lot of good plays. And I mean Bryce Hall. Give a round of applause to Bryce Hall, man. That dude was getting the business from Gronk, Mike Evans, okay, Antonio Brown before he stripped off his clothes and threw him into the stands. By the way, can we take a quick detour and talk about that for a second? So if you guys missed it, it's on the Heavy on Jets Facebook page. I wrote a whole story about it and grabbed a lot of videos and stuff from around the internet. So Antonio Brown apparently was benched in the middle of the game. Antonio Brown wasn't happy about it. Mike Evans and the other Bucks are like, Antonio, just calm down, man. And he strips off his jersey, throws it at some players, and then takes off his clothes and throws them into the stands. It reminded me, I think it was Vince Young who did that for the Tennessee Titans a couple years ago, where he threw his shoulder pads and stuff into the stands. And Antonio Brown started waving up the fans and threw his clothes. A game was going on. What the hell? That was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I I still can't rationalize. Antonio Brown, what the hell? Just when you think you've seen everything for the guy, starts stripping his clothes off and throwing them into his stance. You may see that on eBay later, perhaps. I, I uh, Weird. Anywho, uh, but uh, Bryce Hall was getting the business out there. 
And I got to say that, uh, you know, he held up as well as you could have against talent like that. So a uh, shout out to Bryce Hall. But yeah, receivers, I'd like another receiver. Resign Braxton Berrios. What a weapon he has, uh, Ben. So edge rush, want a, another wide receiver, like a true number one would be nice. I think Elijah Moore could be that guy. You got Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, but another receiver would be very nice. Outside and outside receiver, I'd like to see that as well. Again, wherever you are, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button to drop your questions uh, down below. Let's keep looking here. Let's go to Danger Cobra. We're still finding ways to lose, man. Yeah, it, again, it was, it was disgusting, uh, quite frankly, to lose the game that way. There's just no, there's no other way I can put it. It's disappointing. I was angry. I'm still angry. Obviously, you can hear my voice. Um, but the thing I loved, and again, I'm not trying to get moral cookies here and all this stuff. Again, we, the Jets are four and twelve now with one more game to go. But I loved how they competed. I loved in a game that no one gave them a flying hoot. No one gave them a chance. They were a 14 point underdog, and most of the questions by the media this week, the narrative was, "Wow." Are you going to get starstruck when you see Tom Brady? That was the narrative. Wow, man, you guys are just lucky to be on the football field. That was the story. And I'm like, whoa, this feels so lollipoppy. It said, oh, wow, this is great. Yeah, Tom Brady, the Bucks, Man, you guys are graced with their presence. And Sal said, screw the grace. Screw the blessing. You can have some of this and give them a little poo-poo, a little boo, boo, boo. That's what I love, punching him in the mouth. What about, let's give credit, okay? Everyone wants to trash Robert Sala, that's fine. But I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. Robert Sala winning the coin toss and saying, yeah, we want the ball. And then they grab the ball and then go right down the field, score a touchdown? Robert Sala, balls of steel. Now, you may also just say he didn't want to give the ball to Tom Brady, which is also fair in a home game. But I got to say, I love the chutzpah of Robert Sarr saying, give me that damn ball, baby, and let's go. So I really like that. Let's go to Braden. Great game, boy, Green. I loved it. Again, uh, I loved the competitiveness of the game. I loved the young players making plays. Michael Carter, Zach Wilson, Michael Carter, the second on that sack on Brady. MC2 beats TB12. Science. Um, uh, Eccles, I mentioned Michael Carter, the second, Michael Carter, the first, Zach Wilson, Elijah Vera Tucker. A lot of young players look good, but again, I am still obviously disappointed with the, uh, with the loss. Uh, the AB moment was insane live. I, again, it was weird because I'm like, what the, I'm looking at the screen, right? And I just see AB like yelling at his teammates. I'm like, okay, he's yelling and he takes off his pads. And he starts waving to the fans. I'm like, did he get suspended? The game's going on. Did, or did he get, like, uh, ejected is what I was trying to go for. Like, what the hell? So, yeah, again, the AB thing is weird, man. I, I gathered a bunch of intel on it. Again, heavy on Jets on Facebook. It's an article. Or you could Google uh, Antonio Brown, heavy on Jets. You'll find the story. I, it's just weird, man. I don't know. That was uh, that was strange. That was bizarre. One of the weirdest things I think I've ever seen. And, by the way, so a double-decker here. Not that you guys care about my fantasy football team. I was in the championship game today. But I had AB in the lineup. You know, again, I'm not rooting for A.B. to destroy the Jets. I wanted the Jets to win, obviously. But, you know, I had to play my guy. I play A.B., and obviously he was terrible and then just leaves. And then all of a sudden, the the, the other guy had a Jamar Chase. Thanks. Thanks, fantasy gods, for that one. Anywho. Happy the game was competitive. Zach looked very good, and we fought hard. I hate the play call in the fourth and two. Should have just went for the field goal. We could have beaten Tom Brady one final time. That would have been great, Balake, I will say. I mean, I think the Bucks go for two anyway. I don't think. They bring it to overtime, and maybe the Jets have a different defensive call where they don't let Le'Veon Bell, of all people, uh, score the two-pointer that would have beaten us in that sense. But, again, I'm fine. The field goal, I get it. That's Monday morning quarterback to me saying, hey, you should have kicked the field goal after the fact. I'm fine going for it. I just thought the call was shitty. I, you know, that's my take. But, you know, uh, different strokes, different folks. I love that it was competitive. Again, a lot of people assume the Jets were going to get their teeth kicked down their throat. I took the Jets. Uh, in the 13 and a half. So I'm a happy man from that perspective. But I'll tell you, um, I was cool going for it. I just thought the play was terrible. The play call was terrible. Let's go to Tony G. Our corners were up and down, but they are young players. Hall was also coming back from COVID, but he's a good CB too. Um, I will agree with that. Uh, he was coming off COVID, so there's a chance he may have not even played in this game. So that's a fair point. And I think he is. That's my take. Although, again, I think this is an interesting discussion for the offseason. I think Bryce Hall is a really good quarterback number two. I think Brandon Eccles is a good rotational corner. I don't think he should be relied on as a full-time starter. I think Michael Carter II could be your slot corner. 
Um, I think they need a true bona fide number one corner. Now, what does that look like? Are you going J.C. Jackson hunting? I, I'm kind of concerned throwing a lot of money at a guy who just catches a lot of interceptions because I think that's kind of fluky. I mean, there is a ball hawk sense, but at the same time, and grabbing Patriots, ooh, I'm a little uh, queasy on taking J.C. Jackson. Derek Stingley Jr. has all kinds of issues coming out of the draft. That's a TBD conversation uh, for later, but probably not uh, for the Jets. So I think they need a number one corner, but where are you getting it from? Easier said than done. But I, I love Hall, love Eccles as a rotational guy, and I like uh, Michael Carter the second. And Tony Brown just got fired after the game. If he did, I haven't seen it yet, if that's official. I'm not surprised. I mean, again, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And, uh, man, it's a crying shame because the player, take away all the other stuff, which is hard to do. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's like one of the best wide receivers of this generation, and he's an idiot. And he does all kinds of stupid things. So it's a, it's a crying shame. It's a crying shame. But, uh, hey, I, <laughs> I'm surprised you get fired in the middle of the game. Someone tweeted at me and said it's like Devontae Davis, Buffalo Bills retire at halftime thing. See you, folks. Wait, what do you mean? See you later. See you. Like, he's done. If he was indeed fired, and I, I assume he's going to be if he hasn't already, uh, he's done in the NFL. Uh, that was his last chance. And what a chance he could possibly blow. He got one Super Bowl championship last year, obviously, but the Bucks are a really good team. So back to Balake. No one thought we would have a chance this game, and I'm pleased that the growth and th that the team showed. I'm more hopeful for a matchup for the Bills next week. Sure are. And uh, it will be an important game for the Buffalo Bills, no matter what happened today. Again, I, I'm not fully aware of every score because I was paying attention to the Jets game, but um, there was no way for the Bills to clinch the division today or this weekend, rather. So either way, no matter what combination of things happened, um, that game next week will be uber important for the Bills. So there's no resting of starters, which we've seen in the past. That'll be an important game for the Bills. But I am hopeful, and we will see. Uh, I was at the first Bills game, and they kicked our teeth down our throat, especially in the second half. It was close in the first half. Um, but we'll have to see. I am very hopeful. I know a lot of people wrote these two games off saying, ah, oh, Tampa, Buffalo, see you later, Jets. And I love that they didn't roll over and die. And uh, that, to me, is really encouraging. Uh, let's go to Tony G. Most of Jets' Twitter is crying. We have no wide receiver one, no wide receiver two, no center, et cetera, et cetera. This is a great example of next man up football. I, I, now, it's fair to have some emotions if you're a Jets fan like me. I, the pissed off, you lost, and, and Tom Brady get you again. Again, I, you have every right to feel that way, and you're right. Think about it. No Corey Davis, no Elijah Moore, no Connor McGovern. Um, Michael Carter gets hurt in this game. George Fant, unfortunately, gets hurt in this game, by the way. Uh, George Fant has had a spectacular year. He had to be helped up, but helped off the field by multiple Jets medical people. Doesn't look good. Fingers crossed. Um, but that does not look good. Uh, George Fant's likely out for the year, which is one game, probably. But what a fantastic year by Fant. He still has another year left on his deal. But again, to the point. And then think about all the injuries, Carl Lawson, Vinnie Curry, and everybody else. Uh, that has been hurt this year. It was an impressive effort. So credit to Salah uh, for rallying the troops in a game that not a lot of people gave him a chance. So, uh, you know, you should be proud. A lot of you should be proud uh, what happened there. All right, let's go back to YouTube here again. Wherever you're watching, please hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. It's New York Jets content all day, every day. Show your support, please. Uh, we do uh, post-game streams after every game. We're going to have mock draft Mondays every Monday after the season. So, guys, we're going to have cool guests. If you want to see some of my guests from the past, Charles Davis, Jordan Reed of ESPN, Charles Davis of NFL Network, we have a lot of cool guests. So make sure you guys uh, show your support for a fellow Jets content creator. I'd appreciate it. I am a diehard Jets fan, and I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. So I mix my fandom and kind of my employment together to kind of give you guys a different spin. Let's get back into the questions. Uh, this year was all about Zach. Uh, Proyecta says, uh, looks like the Jets have a good one. He played great against one of the best D's in the NFL. Remember, the Bucks D went to Green Bay and beat Aaron Rodgers last year. Same D. Uh, again, they got a lot of good players. They're missing some. Uh, Shaq Barrett, no JPP in that weird cornerback situation where they cleared COVID, had to take a private jet to the team, uh, to New York, and then jump in the game. That was weird. What a weird game. You had the A-B thing, the corners flying on a private jet to get here. Weird. Anywho, I'm not taking anything away. Uh, Vita Vey and, and a lot of stuff was happening in this game, but impressive effort uh, from Zach Wilson. I thought it looked good, so uh, very nice. And I hope you're right, Tony G. I hope Zach Wilson silenced the haters in this game, and uh, hopefully he did because – Again, wow, what a performance from Zach Wilson. Let's get the final numbers here on Zach Wilson. 
Uh, again, he extends his streak. It's his fourth straight game uh, without a pick. Uh, he finished with 234 yards passing, a touchdown, 89.7 QBR, was only sacked once uh, in this game. Uh, Brady, especially with all the extra, ended up finishing with 400 yards passing, three touchdowns, and uh, looked really good. But I'll tell you, man, anyone who clearly watched the game know that Zach Wilson put on a performance for the ages and a lot of just wow throws. Again, the stats may not wow you, but to me, the wow type, he had tightrope throws, soft throws. He just really showed you the full rainbow, the full gambit. Zach Wilson, super impressive, super impressive. All right, let's get to some more comments here. I'm telling you the punter sucks. Yeah, man, shanked one. That was pretty bad. Um, welcome to the chat. Uh, welcome to the stream, Harry. Uh, thank you so much. Again, we do this every week, so thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, feel free to drop in questions and comments. Let's go to Mike Donovan here. Uh, Zach and the OC, I'm good with the guys you mentioned in the secondary I'm good with, but I'm not good with the head coach. Mike, again, uh, it was reported earlier today, also on Heavy on Jets. I put it out there. Uh, Ian Rappaport said Zach, uh, Sala, excuse me, is safe for 2022. That may have been obvious to some, may not have been obvious to others. So Ian Rappaport says Sala is safe. He has shown, quote, unquote, enough promise and progress uh, for the Jets, even though the win and the win loss record doesn't translate to that, that the Jets want to, quote, build around him. This is all from the Rappaport report uh, from earlier today. I like Sala. I like the cut of his jib. Now, there's going to be, for me, now, playoff mandate, whatever. They need to be an in-the-hunt mandate. The Jets need to be playing meaningful football. They can't be 4-11 and next year, 4-12, and whatever the record is. Like, they got to be competing. They got to be in the conversation, 6-6, six and 7-7, six, 8-8, seven and seven, eight and eight, whatever that is, as they're battling for some sort of playoff contention. And specifically for Salah, to your point, that defense has to improve. It looked pretty good against Brady today until some – things happened in this contest obviously uh but when he gets guys healthy back and everything there's no excuses the defense has to step up to the plate so i i hear what you're saying mike let's go to ryan balake i know there are a lot of fans who are happy that we lost the game to keep the draft position but i want wins man uh how many of past years uh, we're having such high draft picks as paid dividend for us i'll say this anyone who's rooting for a loss screw those people I get it in the Gase era where he said screw Gase. i want him to lose for me i'm rooting for a win baby i'm not rooting for losses OK, if they happen I, again, I, I didn't even come. We're 27 minutes in this postgame stream. I didn't go. Woo, we lost draft position. Screw the draft position. Winning against Tom Brady, Zach Wilson having that kind of game. Now you can rationalize saying, well, I guess we lost. And at least that's a better pick. And Zach Wilson look good. If you want to rationalize that stuff after the fact, fine. But I'm not rooting for losses. And fans that do that, I don't know. I can't relate. I cannot relate to just. You know, going to the game and then like Zach Wilson or someone struggles, you're like, yeah, baby, that's great. Like, what kind of fan are you? I I, I question that. I question that. Um, in terms of like high draft picks paying off dividends in the past, I don't correlate that. I don't say, wow, the Jets have sucked in the draft forever. So every future draft pick is going to suck. Like, you know, it is what it is. You just got to keep going up to the plate and uh, and again, uh, making things happen. Harry, you feel sad. I I'll say this, Harry. Here's a couple of nuggets uh, to try to make you feel unsad, Harry. Let me try to do that. Only two teams in the last 70 years have had rookies leading the team in passing, rushing, and receiving in those categories. The Jets are about to become the third team to accomplish that with Zach Wilson, Elijah Moore, and Michael Carter. Feel good about that, that the progress is there uh, for the Jets. Also, think about this. Uh, the Jets have, uh, it's it's a bigger number now, but uh, heading into this game, they had 14 combined rushing and receiving touchdowns between Elijah Moore, Michael Carter, and Zach Wilson. That's the most from a rookie class ever for the New York Jets. And uh, they've only played 68 snaps together, believe it or not. All three of them on the field at the same time. So again, more progress. They've done it without each other. Imagine when they're all on the field at the same time. Hopefully that doesn't make you feel sad, Harry. So there you go. Let's go to Mike Donovan here. Corey Davis sucks. I will say this. I thought it was pretty good value. I didn't think they really overpaid for him. You see that all the time in free agency. Um, it was an uncharacteristic year. Uh, fumbles, drops, inconsistencies in his game. That's not what he showed on tape in Tennessee. Uh, I think he's going to have a huge bounce back here next year. So I'm not quite sure he sucks, but I don't think he's a true number one, which is kind of what he said when he uh, got signed here. I guess, what else are you going to say? No, I'm a number two. I mean, you know, players have to be confident in themselves. On a more positive note, Pinheiro still looking pretty good. Perfect on the day. Yeah, not bad uh, from Eddie Pinheiro. 
Again, I'm a little concerned. There's an incredibly small sample size here, but I'm not going to complain. Uh, this is the best kicking action we've had since Jason Myers and since Nick Folk. Uh, so Pinheiro, re-sign him. He's the Jets kicker, uh, again, of the future and beyond and all that jazz. But uh, so, yes, way to find a silver lining, Eddie Pinheiro. All right, uh, let's go back to Ryan Balake. Also, for the future, whenever Fant leaves a game, I'm expecting bad things to happen. Idilga, McDermott, must go. We need to draft or sign a better veteran OT in the offseason. Yeah, Idilga, unfortunately, has been a disappointment. I had a lot of high hopes uh, for him coming out of the Senior Bowl in USC. He had some maturity issues, but super talented. McDermott, catching a touchdown from Zach Wilson against the Jags was cool. But again, in terms of consistency as a backup, not really there. I think they will uh, go to extend some more guys. We'll see if Morgan Moses uh, looks like that as well. Benier does look good from Mike, uh, from Edward uh, Figueroa. Tough loss. Uh, no question about it. Again, that, uh, that one is brutal. That's a brutal loss. It's probably the worst loss of the year. I can't really... Maybe there's another one that's just not immediately jumping to my head right now, but uh, just a brutal loss. Just brutal. Absolutely brutal. Uh, Harry, going to this, Zach had at least two passes dropped. And, oh, man, what? Keelan Cole, and while he caught a lot of balls later in the game, I don't know what the final number was, but Keelan Cole, what a drive killer, man. Zach Wilson throws a perfect pass right in the bucket. And bleh, he had butterfingers apparently before the game. What a brutal drop, man. Uh, I, I mean, some of these drops from these guys, you're like, dude, help a young quarterback out. Catch a ball, make someone miss, make a play, like do something. Brutal. Just brutal. I, ah, man, it sucks. That's uh, that's brutal. A lot of bad drops today. Uh, I know he's safe, but he's cheesy, not tough. Wow. That Well, that feels like almost like a personal attack, Mike. I don't really know how to respond to that on Salah. Um, I, I think he is the right kind of guy for what the Jets need. I, I just think he's just a steady the ship kind of guy. So I really like Salah. So I'm going to have to just uh, agree to disagree there. I mean, we'll have to see uh, what he ends up being. Uh, and Pender here. Now Jets lost two left tackles for the season starting center. How are they? How uh, are the paired against the Bills next week? I, I'm assuming like kind of like matched up. Um, well, the Bills, as I just saw on the screen that popped in front of me, they clinched a playoff spot, uh, but the division obviously is still up for grabs. They're tied. Patriots blow out the Jaguars. Bills beat the Falcons, apparently. Uh, so that'll uh, be next week to find out who wins the division. But they're in the playoffs, so they've got plenty to play for. We'll see. Yeah, with uh, George Fan out, um, hopefully, I'm trying to think of the combination. Well, it's going to be Idoga or Connor McDermott, which is not great. So not great. Not good uh, from an injury perspective. It's not good uh, there in Pender. Uh, let's go back to Tony G. One of those drops by Smith was an example of situational football. We had a chance to put some hurt on them on that drive. And, and the uh, Keelan Cole one, to me, was a big one. They ended up having to punt on that drive as well. Another tough drop. Uh, let's go to Ryan Balake. Zach deserves more respect for his growth while you have uh, Trevor Lawrence on another three picks in their game against the Patriots. Give him more weapons and better O-line depth. Zach can be a beast for years. That's the kind of hutzpah I'm looking for, Ryan. Yes progress and right trevor lawrence is like imploded and looks like hot bag of rotten mangoes and look at zach wilson having success yet chirp 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 i'm hearing nothing from the twitter people going wow zach wilson's great huh how about some pop for mr zach wilson people nfl people out there show some more love on zach wilson baby Okay, yeah, can we talk about this for a second? I don't know if you guys saw it. May, many of you, after the game was over, probably just spiked your stuff and walked away. But before I went on the live stream, I like just seeing the final moments, right? So Jets lose in unfortunate, epic fashion, right? Tom Brady drives down the field, scores a touchdown, Zach Wilson tries to move him down the field. It doesn't work. But so after the game, I'm seeing the show on the screen, Tom Brady kind of walking. And Brandon Eccles, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. But I tweeted out saying, um, time, place, circumstance. Brent Nichols had a Sharpie and a football. Did he, Tom, can you sign this? Dude, dude, ask him, like, I, I don't know, in the locker room or something? Come on, man. And Tom Brady signed the football for him. Maybe, I, I will say, I don't know, because now I'm talking out of my butt. The one thing that maybe is since Eccles got the pick that could have been the ball that he intercepted from Tom Brady, kept it, and got it autographed, maybe. Still, it looks really bad. I, I mean, good for him. And maybe if I was in that position, I would have wanted it. But I just feel like, dude, you just lost in epic fashion. Like, you win, fine, but you lose. It just looks really bad. So that's now now that I'm thinking about it, that may have been what happened. 
is uh, that was a ball he picked off of Tom Brady. Um, so cool. But yeah, that, that was, that was, that was weird. That was bad. Uh, back to Mike. I know this defense is horrible, but I want them to continue to build on the offense. Yeah. It's going to be a tough conversation because there's going to be some people that argue on one side for, Hey, um, you know, defense needs love. Joe Douglas has used a lot of the top picks on offense. Think about it. Uh, from his first draft, Mekhi Beck and Denzel Mims, this last draft, Zach Wilson, Elijah Vera Tucker, Elijah Moore. So he hasn't used a top two round pick on a member of the defense yet. So maybe that changes. They have four picks in the top 38 and then whatever changed uh, with today. I've not seen the update of Tankathon. Uh, so it's going to be a tough conversation because I, I, I don't think you should take defense or offense for the sake of taking one or the other, but I think you should take whatever is highest on your board. If that's a top corner, great. If that's Evan Neal, great. If that's this, phenomenal. Uh, I, I think that's going to be big too. Um, but so I, I'm not stuck either way. I, I think being flexible is key. Let's go back to Ryan here. Hope Michael Carter's okay after receiving that concussion. Hated that he went down, changed our running game dynamic, even though Walter and Ty Johnson stepped up. Yeah, Walter, show a little wiggle. He had a couple of nice big-time plays. Ty Johnson catching some footballs. Thank you. Let's get a round of applause for Ty Johnson. Thank you for catching a pass after struggling with that earlier in the year. So that was nice. Made some plays. I really liked that. Very nice. And, yes, uh, prayers and thoughts and love for Michael Carter. Concussions are a scary beast. Uh, I played football, did not play in college, did not play in the pros, played in high school. I suffered more concussions than I could count. And, uh, man, everyone deals with them differently. Those are some harsh demons there. Uh, back to Tony G. The three not being on the field at the same time is also a concern. We need depth at wide receiver and running back. J.D. loves players with injury concerns. Yeah, you saw that with Becton. Uh, Mims has just been everything, even though his injury is the first year and some injuries this year. Uh, it is a concern, but let's see what happens next year. All of those guys are rookies. So, yeah, sure, I don't want Zach Wilson missing a month. I don't want Elijah Moore missing what will probably be the final six games. I don't want Michael Carter missing a bunch of games and having all those guys on IR for different stints. Like, I, I don't want that. So. Uh, hopefully we can get some more there with some uh, real depth, as you mentioned. Uh, Got to root for a win against Brady, of course, obviously. And that should be obvious no matter what the circumstances, regardless of tanking this or tanking that. Like, come on, man. Of course, it's a win against Brady. Uh, Mike Keelan Cole, uh, Keelan Cole, excuse me, sucks too. Yeah, uh, just too much bad. I mean, he had the crazy almost one-handed OBJ catch, and we gave him a lot of love, but uh, a lot of crap there too. Uh, let's go to Dan Cook. What about Dan Feeney? Hell of a game. Yeah. I mean, he stepped in for Connor McGovern. This is a guy that, uh, you know, kind of was a cult hero in the off season with the mullet and woo drinking beers and taking, you know, our team out to the hockey game. Like, uh, but, uh, man, showed some real chutzpah and has a lot of experience as a former center and guard. Uh, so good to see. And hopefully he's a reserve piece uh, for the future. Although, uh, I'll have to take a deeper dive into the analytics on that. Uh, Ryan, I'm all in for getting a true wide receiver one draft. Jameson Williams or get Devontae Adams. JD needs to pull out all the stops to make that happen. Uh, hey, man, some people will say, Adams, you have no chance, but you might as well try to put the full court press on. That kind of ripple effects on the rest of the offense could be tremendous. I would love to see Jameson Williams with that Seattle pick, to be honest with you. I wrote a piece about him over the weekend, one of the biggest playmakers in college football, dynamic. He leads college football in touchdown receptions of 40 yards or more. I love Jameson Williams. I think that'd be a great fit. Uh, so, Ryan, that's a, that's a good player right there. Uh, Zach was being praised by the commentators and analysts today. Now, that's a good look. It's good to see. It's good to see on those wow throws that you hear the commentators going being impressed. Now, part of that, I think, quite frankly, is that, uh, you know, our commentators have sucked. Now, unfortunately, the Jets have sucked, so they've gotten crappy commentators outside of this game, which was a Fox game with Moose, who I love Moose. He's a good friend of mine. Um, but, yeah, it, it was good to finally see that. Zach lost us the game. Joe the Jet, I am not going to even, you know, um, deem this worthy of a response. That's a ridiculous take. Uh, he did not lose us this game. The only way I guess you could possibly twist that is if somehow Zach Wilson called the audible on that quarterback sneak. And, again, I haven't heard any of the postgame stuff yet, so I don't know that. But even still, Zach Wilson was a lot more great today than terrible, so I'm going to have to disagree there. Uh, Tony G, Zach uh, needs more dogs. He is priority. He should be. So I can understand that uh, that take. And uh, and that's what, Tony G, I'll tell you, that's what makes it exciting for me. I am a massive fan of the draft. Maybe it's because the Jets have always stunk, so I've always had high picks, and that's made it interesting. Or I'm just a freak with the draft. So mock drafts, 
draft evaluation, off-season free agency. We're going to have a lot of that, so hopefully I get to see you guys all on this channel all the time again. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a lot of great, really cool draft content. So I hope you guys uh, stay tuned for all that in the coming weeks. That's going to be a lot of fun. We have an exciting off-season ahead of us. Uh, Tony G. Walter is underrated. He absolutely is. You know, back in the preseason, he had a horrible fumble, and then he gets kind of like, kind of cast aside, and then he's earned his way back. The Houston game uh, jumps out, and then in this, it could be a nice rotational player. Could be a nice rotational player. Um, let's go here. Many will say this was the most Jets way to lose, but it's actually the most Brady way to win. Could it be both, a uh, Baron Chess? Could it be both that the Jets found a way to lose and Tom Brady found a way to win? I think it could be both. Could check both of those boxes, to be honest with you. Um... This team is going places today. Proved it. Proud of this team. You should be. A great effort. A great um, hutchbuck from a lot of the players on this team. Uh, again, in a game that no one gave them a flying chance in. In a game where it meant everything for Tampa and seemingly nothing to the Jets, uh, they found a way. And uh, so that's great. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Going through the rest of these before we wrap up. Yeah, but it was also part of the play card. Rather than have confidence, coaches need to solidify the call. Again, uh, I have not seen. Again, I'm on here with you guys, so I've not seen. I've heard there are some reports out there that Zach Wilson did not call his own number, but we will see. Uh, pass rush Tom Brady at all day to eat. No question. They only seemed to get after him when they had exotic blitz schemes. I didn't see them get after him with a four man rush much, but I'll have to double check the tape. Um, uh, George uh, Carl Optus. I saw, I've heard a lot of people talk about him, haven't seen enough tape on him yet to make a big time decision. A big Aiden Hutchinson came on Thibodeau, guys. I need to do more homework on Carl Optus. Uh, we'll have a Purdue insider and draft insider on uh, to break down his tape uh, here soon. And uh, let's go with the final one here from Ryan. Do you think that if we would have stopped the Bucks on that third and 20, we possibly could have put the game away if we got the ball back? No question. And I don't know. I think it was Eccles that was on the outside corner that gave up way too much space. You got to know down and distance. You got to cover. I, I'm cool if you want to play bracket coverage and back up and kind of line up like three yards in front of the first down marker if that's what you want to do. But you got you can't just start exiting back when it's mano e mano like that. Uh, that definitely uh, did not help, and that could have won the game. No question about it. Everybody phenomenal. And I tell you this for those who don't know. Again, my name is Paul Esden Jr. My nickname is Boy Green. I'm a diehard New York Jets fan. I'm also the heavy uh, on Jets, New York Jets digital reporter, again, for heavy.com. I love interacting with you guys. This is a lot of fun. I love getting all the new names in here. Thank you. Again, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Makes a tremendous difference. Hit the subscribe button to show your support. We're going to have all kinds of New York Jets content. This channel is solely dedicated to Jets content. You won't get anything else here. So we'll give you some draft. We'll give you some free agency. And, again, we'll have one more post-game live stream coming at you next week after the Bills game. Thank you, guys. It's been a wild season. There's been highs. There's been lows. But I know one of these years we're going to be talking about a playoff run, and it's so going to be worth it. Um, so I love you guys, and thank you so much. It means a lot. David, uh, uh, going through a couple of these. David, I appreciate that, brother. I try to bring the energy, and uh, I try to bring that chutzpah to all you guys. So thanks again, guys. So uh, so cool. So awesome. Uh, so thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Again, thumbs up, subscribe, and we will see you later this week uh, for some extra content. I'll try to drop a mailbag uh, later this week. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Peace. We got one more game left, babe.